Welcome again for the presentation this morning. We are going to continue with the topic, what does God think? But before we go into that, I think I need the Holy Spirit so He can help me. What do you think? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you have given us a special day and also a responsibility to teach your word. And as I said before, and I always said, I don't deserve it, Lord. I'm a sinner. But Lord, I have a beautiful message you have given me. I cannot keep it for myself. And Lord, as we do enjoy this topic, help us, Lord, that you can open our eyes to see the beauty that you have for us, that we may embrace it to heal our families and heal the churches that you can be glorified before the whole universe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I may talk about many other things. The topic about what does God think is approximately a 200 slides presentation. I will not be able to finish it, but I would like to give you one very important thing about this topic. If there is something that will help your family is this portion. So don't miss it. Don't go to sleep. I want you to have this portion because it's very essential. There's one thing that I always ask people when I present this portion and that is, please don't ask me why people are not doing it. I don't know. But one thing I can tell you, I learned it it has been a blessing for my family. I hope it is a blessing for you. We have talked about children having, you know, wrong behavior, behaving wrong in church, irreverent. We have talked about many other things, and there is one thing that will help us all, and this is it. So let's pay attention to that. The question is, what do families should do on the Sabbath afternoon? Do you know? Okay, option one. It says what? Go to AY program. Is that a common thing to do? Is that the good answer? What option two. What if there's no program? What if there is no program? That's a good question. Okay, option two. Take a nap because it's the resting day. So how many think that option one is good? Okay, don't probably. You don't want to raise your hand, it's okay. How many of you think that option two is the option, the right one? Yeah, that's a whole topic in itself. Sabbath is not for that. But anyhow, that's not my topic today. The most common answer will be option one. That's what people most of the time do, right? The question now is, what does God think? You want to know what God thinks about this? Does He has anything to say about it? He does. So let's find it. The Sabbath and the family were alike instituted in Eden. So what are the two institutions that God gave us in Eden? Sabbath and the family. Now what does God say about this? And in God's purpose, they are what? Indissolubly linked together. What does that mean? Cannot be broken. Just like these bananas that come two in one. You've seen those? If you open one, do you think the other one will be closed? No. If you touch the Sabbath, do you think you damage the family? Yes. If you touch the family, do you think you damage the Sabbath? Yes. And that's what Satan has done. He has touched the Sabbath and he has damaged the family. He has touched the families and he has damaged the Sabbath. You cannot expect that you will hurt me and it will not hurt my queen. You cannot expect that you will hurt her and it will not hurt me. Right? That's what is link. Indissolubly. You cannot separate them. Then the point is, you know that Satan has been fighting one because he knows once he touches one, he touches the other one. You talk about the Sunday law? We have talked about that? You have heard about those things? Well, you touch, you touch the Sabbath, you touch the family. What about touching the family and touching the Sabbath? It does. Look what God says and you will understand. It says there, On this day, more than on any other, it is possible for us to live the life of eating. How many of us have Sabbath 
in our homes that look like Eden, like heaven on earth. Is that what we have? Now God is saying that is the day when it is possible to have it. Do we have it? If we don't have it, then we cannot prove God's word. All right? Okay, let's keep reading. It says there, it was, God's, it was God's plan for the members of the family. So we look at now what I call my ministry. God's plan ministry. If you ever have anything to say about what God thinks about something, I want to know about that. If we talk about building a house, I want to do it God's way. If we are talking about educating children, I want to do it God's way. What about healing? I want it God's way. What about anything? Marriage? I want it God's way. So let's see what God says about His plan. He said, it was God's plan for the members of the family to be what? Associated with who? The members of the family were to be associated with who? In work and study. In worship. And the father as priest of his household, and both father and mother as teachers and companions of the children. Who should be the best friend of your children? Number one, the father. The father should be the best friend of your children. Why? If you don't have that, you have missed the most important part. Because then they can be the best friends with the Father in heaven. Priests of the homes, I can tell you today, even from the Bible, if our children are not our friends, they missed the best point. Can we have that? Can we have that? We can have it. How can we prove that? Because Jesus had it. Isn't that what happened? Who was the best friend of Jesus? His father, he said that he enjoyed going into the mountains alone with his father. That was the most enjoyable moment of his life. If Jesus could have his best friend as the father in heaven, can our children have the Father in Heaven as the best friend? It is possible. If we say the opposite, we will say that Jesus is a liar. You understand the point? God, Jesus, came to tell us in this world that it is possible. Now the point is that we priests of the home, we men, we husbands are the ones responsible for this part so the children can learn to have the Father as the best friends. You see that now? Okay. Now it says that God's plan for the family is that they will associate in what? Work. Is that what we see today? No. They should be associated in what? Study. Is that what we see today? No, we don't see they go to schools, boarding schools even, where there is no daddy, no mommy. Go away. Then what is? Worship. Is that what we see? No. There is not even worship in the school, in the houses. That's why we have seen the family Bible camp. We have seen the example. Morning and evening. How it's done. How it should be done. So we can practice it at home. We have to go back to God's plan. And it says there, And... Recreation. Does that mean parents should be recreating with their children? Yes. But the results of sin having changed the condition of life to a great degree prevent this association. You see where Satan is focusing his tactics? He is preventing what? The association of the family. In every aspect. You have seen it already. We have counted. Work, it doesn't happen. Study, it doesn't happen. Worship, it doesn't happen. Recreation, it does not happen. 
especially that one. So what are we going to do? Are we going to go follow God's plan or no? Do you want to go back to God's plan? Let's do it in the proper way. How? Let's see. Often the father hardly sees the faces of his children throughout the week. He is almost wholly deprived of opportunity for companionship or instruction. But God's love has set a what? A limit. What is a limit? Boundary. You said to a dog, you cannot cross this line. And the dog has to learn that he cannot cross that line. And it can be done. And you can have even a dog coming to a place where there is no line whatsoever and he will stay there. I have done it. I used to train dogs. So I know it can be done. If it can be done with a dog, can we have children do it too? Of course. Jesus did it. Didn't he was obedient? Can it be done? Yes, it can be done. A boundary, a limit to the demands of toil. God said, you are going too far. This is getting too out of place. You have to keep this. It's part of my commandment. What is that? Over the Sabbath, he places his merciful hand. In his own day, he preserves for who? For who? For the family, a time and a place. When and what is that? Let's see it. He preserves for the family opportunity for? Communion. With whom? Whom is him? God the Father. Number one, God the Father. Number two, who? With nature. You see who is coming now? Who is number one? The Father. Who is number two? Nature. Is that including tablets and phones? No, they are not included in this association. So whenever you are talking about this moment that God is limiting, should be what? God the Father. What else? Nature, not gadgets. Okay? And it says, who else? And with one another. Who does that mean? The neighbor? No, the family. The missionary that comes visiting? No. The pastor? No. The family. God said it is a limit. You cannot touch it. There is a time and a moment on the Sabbath day. It should be only for the God the Father, nature, and the family. Three. Only three. Why three? The Sabbath school and the meeting for worship occupy only a part of the Sabbath. What is the Sabbath school? We had it this morning, right? The Sabbath school. Then it says there, and the what? And the meeting for worship. What is that? That's right now. That's called divine service. You understand that? Clear? Okay, so now let's count it again. It says that, that the Sabbath school and the divine service or the meaning for worship, occupy only part of the Sabbath. What is left? From the Sabbath, what is left that we haven't talking about? The afternoon of the Sabbath. Is that clear? Okay, because I wanted to see that God is going to talk now about the Sabbath afternoon. Clear? The portion remaining to the family. What is that portion remaining? The afternoon for who? For the family. God set a limit and He says the Sabbath afternoon is for me, nature, and the family. Do not touch it. It says, may be made the most sacred and precious season of all the Sabbath hours. What does it say? Could it be what? The most sacred. Is divine service the most sacred part of the Sabbath? No. No. No for the Lord. 
the most sacred, the one that you cannot touch, is the Sabbath afternoon. With the Father, number one. With nature and with the family only. Nobody else. So let me tell you how it's practiced in my home so you can see. And this is true story, true story. It's things that happen in our life. One day I was in Lina Longan and they said, from, I was sitting with my family, and they said, oh, doc, in the announcement, you know, before Divine Hour and so on. And they said, oh, and Dr. Boutet is going to give us a lecture about health. I don't remember the title, whatever. In the afternoon today. And then the person that was talking said, Pastor told me. He's right there. I said, sorry, but I did not know about this. But he told me. So I looked, see if I saw the pastor. He wasn't there. So I said, oh, I'm sorry, but I would be more than glad to do it on Wednesday night, Friday night, or any other day. But today, in the afternoon, no, I cannot do it. Pastor know about it. I have talked to him about it. He knows that I have no messages, no participations on the Sabbath afternoon. Sabbath afternoon is my time with my family. I will not be able, but I can do it any other time. It ended there, nothing will happen. Of course, I didn't come. Because I have a commandment to fulfill. Now, let's say that there's a day that I have gone somewhere else and I'm not at home. And for that reason, the Sabbath comes in the place. I am in that place and I'm not with my family. And they ask me, would you give a lecture about health or about family or whatever? I do it in the afternoon, that Sabbath, because I'm not with my family. Sadly, I'm not with my family. But if I am with my family and I have a presentation anywhere, I do not do anything on the Sabbath afternoon. Why not? Because God said so. Is it clear? If it's not, let's keep going so you can see it clearly. Okay? It says there, Much of this time parents should spend with who? Okay, you see that? Okay, now continue. In many families, the younger children are left to themselves to find entertainment and best they can. Left alone, the children soon become restless and begin to play or engage in some kind of mischief. Thus, the Sabbath has, no, has to them no sacred significance. So you see the problem right here? Do we have problem with this in our church today? Sacred of the Sabbath, children don't know what Sabbath is and they don't know what reverence is and they just play and do whatever they want in the Sabbath day. Is that what we have in problem? That's what we have. The question is, how are we going to resolve this problem? Well, let me tell you, this is the tool. This is what you have to take home and use it from now on. Because it's one of the best tools for you to save your home. So don't miss it. This is the best. I cannot leave you without this tool. You have to have it. So don't go to sleep. Okay? In pleasant weathers. Let parents walk with their children in the fields and grooves. Where? So you see, God says, with me, the Father, in nature and the family. Nobody else. Amid the beautiful things of nature, tell them the reason for the institution of the Sabbath. So that's one story. Describe to them God's great work of creation. That's another thing you can talk to them about. And then it says, tell them, and you can keep reading. It's a whole paragraph. Tell them about the story of Joseph. Tell them about the, the story of Daniel. Tell them about this, and tell them about that, and tell them about that. The father has to take the time in the afternoons to spend the time with the children. Of course, the wife also. But the main thing is the father in heaven, the nature, and the children. To tell them stories about Jesus, about the stories of the Bible. Spend time together. Not together in a Bible study. Can you see now the problematic for our homes today? What is one of the tools God has given us? And He said, it is enough. You have to keep it. I put the limit. It's for the family, for God in heaven, and in nature. And we have touched it. 
and we have not followed his plan for our families. Upon the Sabbath, there should be a solemn dedication of the family to God. You see that? Solemn dedication of the family. And he previously said that is the most sacred hour of the Sabbath day. Which one? The afternoon. It should be sacred. If you don't miss divine service, you should not miss Sabbath afternoon with your family. Because it's more sacred than divine hour. At least for God. Maybe not for some of us. And I can remind you here, I come to this point and I remind you, please do not ask me why some people are not doing it. Is that clear? This is a tool, you can have it. I have used it. I know it works. I know it works. If there is a moment that my children enjoy the most, it's the Sabbath afternoon with me. Why? Because they are learning to enjoy time with the Father in heaven. This is a habit. This is a time. This is a tool that God has given us. And He said, do not touch it. The commandment includes all within our gates. All the inmates of the house are to lay aside their worldly business and employ the sacred hours in devotion. Let all unite to honor God by cheerful service upon His holy day. Now for the next paragraph that we are going to read, this is an example of how Ellen G. White kept the Sabbath afternoon. Do you want to know if she did what God said? Let's see it. Sabbath was made the most pleasant day of the week for the children. Ah, how is that? Did Ellen G. White follow this? Oh yes, she had special things on the Sabbath day. Many, many things on the Sabbath day were special for Ellen G. White. Number one, food. You will see it. Of course, the family will attend the church service. That means now, right? Divine service. And if Elder and Mrs. White were free from speaking responsibilities, the family would sit together during the service. Right there. If I don't have to speak, we will sit there together. So the children on one side and the parents on the other side? No. Sit together. You see the problem? On the Sabbath, families should sit together. Children should be with the parents. And then he says, the family would sit together during the service for dinner where would be some choice dish not had on other days. Example, in my home, we say, for example, okay, we have cashew nuts, casois, and we say, this bag is for Sabbaths only. Okay. That's the special thing for the Sabbath. And we do not touch that bag any other day. And nobody dares to do that. Because it will be disobedience and it will be sin. So my children do not touch that bag. And on the Sabbath day, we bring that bag out and everybody enjoys the special thing for the Sabbath day. It doesn't have a glamorous thing. It has to be only a special thing. It doesn't have to be exaggeration. It could be a special thing. Food could be presented differently. Could have something you have not had on the, the week and you can have a special dish for the Sabbath. Make it special. Flowers, you talk about, we talk about the flowers, as you saw, my little cat Miel looking for flowers yesterday morning so we can get ready for the Sabbath. Make the Sabbath a special day. And then, if it was a pleasant day, Mrs. White would walk with the children in the woods or by the rivers, and they would observe the beauties of nature and study the creative works of God. Can you see that? Did Ellen G. White obey God's command? She did. She kept the Sabbath afternoon sacred moment for the family. Do we have to do it? It's our choice. Now let me tell you, this is not something I'm bringing to you because you have to do it. No. This is what is going to save your family. This is what has helped my family. You can enjoy using something that God has placed that we can save our families. You want your families to be saved? Then we have to follow it. You have to use it. Who is the one who gets benefit of this? 
God? He doesn't get the benefit. We are the ones who get the benefit. Our families. I've seen it in my family, so I wish the best for yours too. If the day was rainy or cold, she would gather the children around the fire in the, uh, in the house and read to them, often reading from materials she had gathered from here and there as she made her journeys. Some of these stories were later printed in books so other parents might have them to read to their children. So I have presented to you the best tool to save your families. So don't miss it. Now we are going to continue looking at some of the problematics so you can see where God is very sad. What should children do on the Sabbath day? Number one, because they cannot understand the message, they can go out of the church. Is that what it should be done? And that's what happened most of the times. But that should not be done. That's wrong. That's clear. Oh, sorry, different activities during divine service to distract them. Because they can understand, they have to do activities so they can distract the, the children. You remember we saw it already in the other presentations. Children need to learn to pay attention to the preacher, otherwise it will, consider, it will be considered by God a sin. If that is so, how can we make it? How can we teach our children to pay attention? So we need to learn. That's why we have been doing this seminar. So what does God think about that? Let's see what He says. I have found that on the Sabbath day many are indifferent and do not know where their children are or what they are doing. This is God speaking. He says, parents are not aware of what is going on on the Sabbath day. They allow the children to go running out. They don't know where they are. They do not know what they are doing. This is a problem. Problem for God. And He says, parents, above everything, take care of your children upon where? Is that what happens in our church today? No, it's the opposite. Can you see the problematic? So what is God's recommendation or His command? Do not suffer them to violate God's holy day by playing in the house or out of doors. You may just as well what? Break the Sabbath yourself as to let your children do it. Clear? Whenever a child breaks the Sabbath playing, you are the one responsible for that. And you are also breaking the Sabbath as your child is doing it. Do you know? You didn't know. And beside that, he's doing it there. You don't know it. You are not looking at what he's doing. Yet, in the book of heaven, is counted in your book a sin that you did not see, did not know. You understand now this? Clear? It says, and when you suffer your children to wander about and suffer them to play upon the Sabbath, God looks upon you as what? Sabbath breaker. Sabbath breaker. Are we commandment keeping people? Have we been keeping the Ten Commandments? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy neighbor and do all thy work. We can memorize that verse, but do we understand what it says? The house of God is often desecrated and the Sabbath violated by Sabbath believers' children. Who? Heathen? Wicked children? By who? Sabbath believers. In some cases, they are even allowed to run about the house, play, talk, and manifest their evil tempers in the very meetings where the saints should be worshiping God in the beauty of holiness. And the place that should be holy, and where a holy stillness should reign, and where there should be what? Perfect neatness. The first place where we should practice neatness, order, is in the house of God. And that means at home too. And where there should be perfect order, neatness and humility is made to be what? A perfect Babylon. Confusion. This is enough to bring what? God displeasure and shut 
his presence from our assemblies. Therefore, we know one thing today. There are many churches that do not have the Shekinah glory today. You want to go to that church? I don't. I want to go to a church where God's presence is in it. But what is the reason that in many of our churches today may not have God's presence? The irreverence and the ma bad management of us as parents that we allow our children to break the Sabbath. Your children should be taught to obey as the children of God obey Him. If this standard is maintained, parents, look at this. Pay attention to this part of the paragraph. Please. It says here, your children should be taught to obey as the children of God obey Him. If this standard is maintained, a word from you will have some weight when your child is restless in the house of God. That means your children should be taught to obey to the point that if something is happening, they may have a spiritual battle right now. If my children have a spiritual battle and they are getting restless, I have the opportunity to say, one word and he's gone is that what happens today mommy says Juan come does he come this is what God is talking about if at home your children do not know this. If they don't learn this, do you think they will do it when they are in church? They will not. So what is the tool? We have to start where? We saw it. At home. They have to learn it at home. So your children should be taught obedience. But if the children cannot be restrained, if the parents feel that the restraint is too much of an exaction, the child should be removed from the church how much? Or I will say ask, how soon? Immediately. Deaconess, this is where we need your help. You have to learn the character of Jesus. So when you need to do it, you know how to do it. But if there is a child that is restless, you have to go and help that mother. But for you to know how to do it and what to do, you have to be a mother. You have to know how to do it. You see medical missionary work? We saw that. You want medical missionary work? You need to know how to be a father and a mother first. Then it says there, It should not be left to divert the minds of the hearers by talking or running about. God is dishonored by the loose way in which parents manage their children while at church. Parents should not only teach, but command their children to enter the sanctuary with sobriety and reverence. Now, where is the school to teach our children reverence? Family worship altar. The home is the school where all may learn how they are to act in the church. So the tool is given. God has given you the tool. You have come to the Family Bible Seminar. You now know the tool for your children to learn to behave in church. They must know to behave at the family altar every day, morning and evening. That is the tool. The world will take knowledge of them that they have been with Jesus and have learned of Him. What an impression the church will make upon the world if all the members will live Christian life. So, today we know one thing. If in the church we don't see reverence, if in the church we don't see the respect for the sacredness of the Sabbath, for the house of God, with our children, who is the one to blame? The children. No. Who? The parents. Because we did not know how to do family altar daily. Now you have seen the example, do it at home.
Now you have the tool. And you know how serious God is about these things. And you know how much His face saddens when He sees these things in our churches today. You want healthy churches? You need healthy homes. You want healthy homes? You need healthy husbands. And that is here, not in the body. I'm not talking about body. Of course, we need healthy bodies. But what I'm talking about is we need men who know what to do. You cannot go to marry someone without knowing what you have to do. Do you know that if you marry someone without knowing your responsibility, God calls that a sin? How many of us have done it? Gone into marriage without having the training we need. Yet God says, I see it as a sin. Reverence is greatly needed in the young of this age. I am alarmed as see children and youth of religious parents so heedless of the order and property that should be observed in the house of God. While God's servants are presenting the words of life to the people, some will be reading, others whispering and laughing. Their eyes are what? Sinning. We saw it already. Your eyes can sin, brothers and sisters, by diverting the attention of those around them. The ha this habit, if allowed to remain unchecked, will grow and influence, of, and influence others. Children and youth should never feel that it is something to be proud of, to be indifferent and careless in meetings where God is worship. God sees every irreverent... Does He say action? What does He say? Thought. Even our thoughts right now, in our children also, He sees them. Not only actions, even the thoughts. Do you know what your children are thinking? How can you know then if it's sin or no? You see how much we have been lacking, we don't know what to do and how to behave. As parents, Every irreverent thought or action, and it is registered in the book of heaven. He says, I know thy works. Nothing is hid from his all searching eyes. If you have formed in any degree the habit of inattention, remember we talk about this, and indifference in the house of God, exercise the powers you have to correct it and show that you have self respect. Practice reverence until it is become a part of yourself. Parents make a most terrible mistake when they neglect the work of giving their children religious training, thinking that they will come out of all right in the future, and as they get older, with, will of themselves be anxious for a religious experience. The reason today that the children and youth do not have a Christian life is to be blamed in the parents. God says that even Samuel will stand one day, I said to his mother, because of you, I'm in heaven. But Napoleon, he will stand and say to his mother, because of you, I'm in hell. How many children would have to utter those words to us? Do you want to hear those words? I know you don't want. But God has given us the opportunity to see where the problem is. And that's probably not more difficult to see because we know it. We see it in our society. But God has given us also the opportunity to see the solution. The tool that He has given us. So please don't ask me if I'm going to do a presentation this afternoon because I will not. Right? You know, everybody knows that, right? It's clear? I will be walking with my family as I do every day, Sabbath, when I am with them. And I keep that because it's the commandment of God. It's not joking. And not because I have to do it. We enjoy it. That's the most precious thing. We enjoy it. All of us in my family. If you know that your family needs salvation, 
that you have troubles, that God wants to save you from that. He wants to save your children. And yes, we are the ones to blame. Take the responsibility. Come with me in our knees so we can say, please, Lord, forgive us and help us to do it right now. That we will use the tools you have given us to keep the Sabbath and our families healthy. If you want that, come with me. Heavenly Father, I cannot see, but I know I have presented this truth to your people. And I want the best for them. I have experienced it myself. I can see the effect in my family. I can see the blessings. And I want those blessings for each one of the families here and in the world. I cannot put myself in the mind of anybody. But I ask you, Lord, that you will use the topic, the truth with your Holy Spirit to help the parents, especially the men, to understand the responsibility that we have to save our children from this world and the privilege that we have to be their friends. It's a privilege, Lord. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.